Hello and welcome to our session, Adding Value to the Visit Experience. Today, I'm, we're joined by me, I'm Dylan Gerald, Associate Director of Admission. We're also joined by two other of my colleagues at Washington and Jefferson College, Nicole Shannon and Nicole Focoretto. Um, we're also joined by Martin O'Quinn from Belmont Abbey College. Martin, do you wanna introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. Um, for those of you who haven't met, my name is Martin Oakland, the Vice Provost and Dean of Admissions over at Belmont Abbey. And in case you're wondering what I'm doing on this uh, recording with three folks from Washington and Jefferson College, um, it's because I've had the distinct pleasure of serving uh, under Nicole Focoretto's leadership during her tenure at Belmont Abbey as an admissions counselor. Um, and then, you know, actually leaving the college, coming back uh, three years later as the director of admissions, still working with Nicole very closely. And um, really, you know, I consider her a, uh, a mentor and, and a guide and a guru in all things enrollment management. Um, so a lot of our approach to the visit experience and uh, my approach to, to leadership at Belmont Abbey College is influenced uh, by her support and guidance. So very excited uh, to be joining and participating and very grateful for the team over at Washington and Jefferson uh, for collaborating on this exciting presentation. Thank you, Martin. That was awesome. Well, so today we wanted to share a little bit about who we are as institutions um, and kind of what we've been doing uh, before the pandemic as it relates to campus visits and what that experience looks like for our students. Um, and then once the pandemic changed, we'll kind of go over how we see some opportunities with the pandemic um, and what we could do differently, so. So just to tell you a little bit more about our institutions, um, WNJ is a small private liberal arts and sciences college. We have about 1150 students total on our campus. We have over 30 majors, a 10 to one student faculty ratio. We pride ourselves on our uncommon experiences for students. Um, we are NCAA division three. We have 26 um, athletic programs on campus and we are located in Washington, Pennsylvania. Uh, similarly, Belmont Abbey College is a small private liberal arts college. We are Catholic and Benedictine in our identity. Um, we have just about 1,500 students uh, located just outside of Charlotte, North Carolina, um, NCAA Division II athletics, and uh, you know, over 25 different uh, major programs of study. So those of you who, who aren't familiar with the Abbey, that's just a, a little snapshot on the community that we have. So before the COVID-19 pandemic, um, WNJ was open Monday through Friday and select Saturdays throughout the year. We were able to offer visits nine to five, sometimes later, and um, like I said, on Saturdays as well. And sometimes we had up to three, four, sometimes five visitors per hour. Um, so whenever we did shift during the COVID-19 pandemic, that had to change. We also offered um, virtual tours and a virtual experience, but we weren't pushing those out nearly as much as our in-person experiences on campus. Um, we had about 12 or more in-person events each year, and we offered a $1,000 visit grant to all students who were able to visit WNJ. And this is a pretty similar approach that, that we have been taking at Belmont Abbey um, with the kind of weekday visits and select Saturdays. Um, we had a neglected on-demand virtual tour that had kind of been buried on the website um, and lots and lots of uh, events to kind of drive that uh, conversion and yield throughout the, the admissions funnel. So just to give you some background and some context and some numbers to look at, um, these are on average about how many visitors we had every year um, from March to March. So it was over 1300, um, but we just wanted to give you some, a little bit of context as to what our numbers have looked like as far as the number of visitors that we have to campus. And then everything changed. So whenever, you know, on March 15th, whenever um, the pandemic really hit full force in the US, um, the enrollment teams at WNJ and at Belmont Abbey were able to shift pretty quickly. Um, I think a lot of that comes from living out these values already um, in our daily 
lives and in our daily jobs. Um, but, you know, I think we just embody these all the time. So it was very easy for us to change, but we wanted to make sure that all of you um, had a resource and a, and a takeaway um, to be able to, to see this. So quite often when change is necessary, um, we are simply in it. And we don't necessarily take that time to reflect how we approach the change because with the COVID-19 pandemic in March, 2020, many of our institutions, including WJ and Belmont Abbey, we needed to shift for the sake of urgency. And as a leader, you know, at an, an institution that um, pivoted quickly, the urgent matters needed to be taken care of first and they were, but it's because of our agility that we were able to pivot, stay calm and focus on what's really important during a yield season. And so we want to share with you some of those things that we did and really speak to how and why we were able to take those healthy risks as we face change together. And for the most part, it was because our institutions already had a sense of a recruitment culture, the importance of it, and we really value what our institutions stand for during times of change and all times. So with that being said, our teams were able to pivot quickly and stay focused on what's really important. And while we were pivoting, we really got together as you know individual enrollment teams and kind of collectively decided what students were most interested in learning more about. So um, at WNJ specifically, we focused heavily on getting to know other students. That was a big thing. Um, career outcomes, curriculum overview, and student life were pretty pivotal um, pieces that we added to our virtual experiences and all of those things. But um, you know, 72% of 2021 students said that they wish that they had an opportunity to visit in the fall, to visit a college campus in the fall. So um, just goes to show it's super important to be able to you know, engage with students and kind of meet them where they are, really, um, and, you know, give them the things that they're interested in learning more information about. As you can see on the next few slides, um, both Washington and Jefferson and Belmont Abbey have had a lot of unique and eye-catching signage around campus to attract the attention, not only of our campus community members, but also of our visitors and the campus neighbors. Um, one of my personal favorite lines of our WNJ pledge to promote safety are the first two, just saying that we are better together, but in this particular instance, um, being together may come with some risks. So everyone, both in our campus community and outside of our campus community, knew that we needed to change. We knew that change was necessary in March of 2020. Um, so we circled everything that we could back to our mission and values of uncommon integrity. Um, so you'll see on the signage on the next slide, um, some very specific language that does reflect the uncommon integrity and just uncommon experience that students are having at WNJ. So, you see the uncommon integrity for the common good. Um, our students were seeing these signs and many others um, pretty regularly and, and as were our visitors, including small table tent signs that reminded everyone to stay six feet apart. Um, these are located everywhere on campus, pretty much on every desk in every classroom and in every office um, and everything up to our, um, your health and safety are paramount at WNJ College, which are some of our larger signs on campus that you see pretty much everywhere as you walk throughout campus as well. Now, similarly to the approach that WNJ took, you know, we are, you know, trying to use all these best practices and guidelines from the CDC, you know, federal, state, local um, kind of guidelines, um, but internal 
monetize them and own them and make them ours. So, you know, how uh, they use kind of uncommon integrity and things like that. We, we also had a community covenant and community is a hallmark of, you know, Benedictine education and, and core to, uh, you know, Belmont Abbey and who we are. So you'll see on some of our signage, do your part. Uh, things like that. So we tried to, uh, everybody kind of agreed to a community covenant, but uh, we, we tried to make this about us, about our community, about um, allowing the Belmont Abbey College experience to, to continue. Um, but you'll see kind of, we adjusted kind of signage everywhere on campus. There's kind of reminders uh, encouraging students. One, don't, you know, please don't come if you're, if you're sick or not feeling well, but are required and social distancing is required and we're you know increasing sanitization and things like that so we adjusted signage as well as um, kind of what the language that's in our confirmation messages emails website and things like that too so some of this is here's a small example of some of the things that we have around campus so uh, you know, now we really want to take you through you know, seizing the opportunities that were presented by this COVID-19 pandemic and I think um, you know, the temptation in times of, of, of crisis is to view it as just that, uh, oh no, a crisis, let's, let's panic. And, and uh, of course, you know, we don't have the luxury of doing that. We still have that responsibility to bring in not only this class, but future classes. So um, how we viewed, you know, this time as an opportunity, I think is really going to be presented in these next few slides. So we're going to run through um, communicating and staying informed. We're going to run through you know, virtual tours, virtual experiences, what we had, how we shifted, uh, rethinking events and visits on campus, collaborating around campus, again, contributing that, that or, or leveraging that campus-wide culture of recruitment, um, getting creative, and then, of course, maintaining that all-important follow-up and, and, and not just letting that um, uh, not, not using this information that we learned throughout this time, but we want to actually leverage that to continue to enhance these, these visit opportunities. One of the first things that we really did was um, whenever the, the information broke that the pandemic had hit us, um, one of the first things that we did was um, communicate with first each other. Um, and then we sent out messaging to all kinds of people, our students, the greater games community. And then we continually stayed informed about what was happening with the global health situation. Um, our communications were pretty critical and you saw our signage earlier, but you know, we were constantly emailing our students about not only what our health and safety protocols were, but also about the value and, and what all of these different things mean. Um, we also did a lot to communicate with other offices on campus. Um, for example, coaching staff are also working with campus visitors. So leveraging those relationships and partnerships with them um, and just gaining buy-in was super important. Same thing with our tour guides as well. And then, um, you know, pretty immediately we focused on the virtual tour and virtual experience, particularly in that time frame where we you know, couldn't welcome students to campus. So um, for us at Belmont Abbey, you know, we had a on-demand kind of virtual tour. We utilized UVisit. Many of you are probably familiar with that platform. Um, but like I said, it was kind of buried on the website and not, not front and center. Um, and that on-demand resource was really important for us, very valuable right away to put a little bit more front and center uh, so that students that were looking to, uh, you know, visit campus in some way had that opportunity. So that was kind of an immediate response was just relocating that. But very quickly, we realized that that wasn't going to be enough. So we looked at um, a guided uh, virtual uh, experience. So we, we basically moved you know, we took what, what you would experience during a on-campus visit to a virtual format where we actually have, you know, daily opportunities for students to register, you know, log in, meet with a, uh, an admissions counselor, have a student, current student tour guide, take them around through campus, customize that tour based on their interests and what they want to dive into, and then again, follow up and kind of go through next steps, you know, in a personalized kind of admissions counseling setting. So 
um, is important for us to have both opportunities. And I think that that's something that, you know, some institutions may want to do just one or the other. They say, you know, virtual tour is not just one thing. It can look a lot different. Um, and you can have multiple options. And I think it's, it's important to, to be focused on kind of where students are um, and, and engage them kind of where they're comfortable engaging. So if it's just dropping in on the website, you know, at midnight, then that on-demand tour is a great resource to click through and explore. Um, but if they want something a little bit more personal and engaging, then they might actually prefer to register um, and experience kind of a little bit closer to what they would experience if they were coming to campus. Um, I do think, um, you know, that's really important to have that, include that variety um, in, in the experience. Yeah, and at WNJ, we used both the um, on-demand and the um, scheduled session as well. Our on-demand um, experience was a little bit different. We had used UVisit in the past, um, and then we switched over to a different platform but our you know, on-demand virtual experience was meant to be engaging. Um, the whole idea behind it was to provide a feeling for students um, and really you know, show what the values of WNJ is and show what students can expect whenever they get to campus. Um, the faculty and the staff and the current students at WNJ all participated in creating these 12 super specific videos, um, as well as the interactive map that was alongside it. And we did go through that with our virtual visits as well. Um, but I think it's super important to have, to have both that on-demand and the, the scheduled. We also had to rethink our admission events and our personal visits. So we were able to as the first point says, head outside if possible. During the summer and fall months, we actually had tents across campus with outdoor furniture in them so that we could take our families pretty much anywhere on campus to do a one-on-one -on -one personal meeting with them. Um, they, of course, got to tour the campus with a student ambassador, and they could still meet with um, coaching staff or professors if they wanted to. Um, we did offer a virtual counterpart to pretty much all of our in-person admission events as well. So that did make our events a little bit smaller because we were able to break the group up and have you know so many students who took advantage of the virtual experience and so many students who came on campus, um, which helped us be able to remain on campus throughout the summer and fall months. Um, and then we still facilitated meaningful conversations with our students, faculty, and staff as I said, we were still able to offer those one-on-one um, -on -one personal sessions with our students. And we were able to have students sit in on some virtual classes. Um, our students were able to meet with the coaching staff early even in the admission process up until now, um, as well as professors, counseling team, and our student ambassadors. So quite often when something <clears throat> is under attack, your usual way of operating is under attack and you're faced with making very quick changes and pivotal changes, you really have to reflect on what you feel works, what has worked well, and leverage what has worked well. So for our institutions, as you can already sense from who we are, we're naturally collaborative, and we like to think we're a little creative too. We needed to exponentially tap into that in order to maximize the full potential of what we had, what we felt worked well, and see if there was any additional opportunity from those platforms, relationships, et cetera. And so one thing that I know that we all needed to do was really think through leveraging our vendor partners, our enrollment partners that we really rely on in this work. And I'm sure many of you have those partners too. For us, we ultimately needed to think, well, what is absolutely under attack? And being in person was something that was under attack. We knew we needed to pivot. 
And we knew we needed to provide an opportunity for our students and their parents to connect, connect with us, connect with each other. So we thought through with our vendor partners what we had that was already working. One thing, of course, was our digital marketing. We pushed out the opportunity to visit virtually, digitally, and we continued to reinforce those messages. And without our vendor partners, we wouldn't have been able to do that quickly in order to help us yield our class. One other thing specifically at WNJ, um, I got on the phone with presidents and founders of some of these vendor partners. And I said, we've had a great relationship thus far, and now we need to level up. What can we do that is different? What can we do that will help us stand out? One thing that we were able to do with our friends from Zimi was create a speed friending event in a live chat format to assist our students to connect with each other during a time when they were longing for that sense of belonging and connection. Everyone was seeking answers and they needed a safe place to get that information. So with help from our Zimi friends, and you all have may have used Zimi in the past, you may have been on a, another webinar or a session learning about Zimi and the speed friending idea. I can share with you that that stemmed from a conversation with founders at Zimi and the WNJ team. And ultimately we did that to be of service to our students, but also to be of service to other institutions. Because we firmly believe that there's value in that, making that connection in a virtual safe place that students trust and ultimately achieves the end goal. Other areas of collaboration, of course, involve other offices on campus, and really thinking about the internal team and making sure that we're not only working with our ambassadors and our work study students who work with us, but also connecting those great stories of students who are outside of the team and showcasing those stories because our prospective students really want to hear stories that they can resonate with, especially during a time when people are seeking answers. So we were able to do that and then some, but it was because of the fact that we were all committed to collaborating and we were all committed to being creative and thinking creatively together. I think a, a great way to, if you can go back just one slide for a moment, I, I think a great way to accomplish kind of everything that, that Nicole just said is to, or, or at least one approach that I would recommend is, is taking a look at all of your events, you know, as a team, you know, bring in other stakeholders if you can, um, but, but recollecting kind of what is the purpose of this specific event? You know, is it a yield event? Is it you know, just a, a general kind of open house to, to drive interest in applications. What is the, what are you hoping that students get out of this experience, this visit, this event? Um, and then if you're needing to shift that, or if you have had to shift that to an online format, how are you going to continue to meet those specific goals and objectives in an online format? Um, so I think Nicole's uh, story about what W&J and Zimi did to engage and kind of connect students and build those connections at that critical time um, when they're trying to, you know, see how they would fit in in a college community. Um, you know, that, that's so important that every institution have that conversation of saying, you know, oh, if we would do that, you know, in an on-campus event by bringing people together and kind of, um, you know, I'm familiar with with uh, the speed friending that Nicole mentioned. This is something that she had implemented at um, on-campus events at Belmont Abbey, and we had done that. You know, speed friending, things like that, where you, you connect. But how do we do that in an online format? Um, it's not enough just to say, "Oh, we can't do that online." You have to ask how. You have to challenge those vendor partners to work with you to find a way. Um, it is possible. You can do it. Um, and I find it really boosts morale in the office. And, and you'll be surprised how 
um, kind of your team rises to the challenge. Um, I remember bringing these kind of same questions or concerns to some of our newest staff members in the office and saying, you know, how are we going to build community if we're doing this virtual, you know, online event, it's kind of 30 minutes sessions and they're going from session to session and things like that. Um, and one of our newest admissions counselors came up and said, why don't we have a Instagram scavenger hunt? And I said, wow, what does that look like? And she kind of pulled something up where there was an Instagram account with lots of tiles and there was a whole map of campus. And when you click on each tile, each section, you could drill in further and further. And there was um, locations that were tagged with locations on our campus. There were accounts, Instagram accounts of different clubs, activities, um, student organizations, athletic organ athletic teams, um, even specific like administrators and things like that when you drilled down and you could explore their accounts, their like certain hashtags that were part of the institution. And um, it, it engaged students too. There was, you could click and they had questions and if they responded and engaged in certain ways, they could win prizes and things like that. Um, but ultimately by following all of these different accounts and exploring different areas, we were connecting them um, virtually, but still connecting them with real resources on campus. So I think it's important um, to keep that, that wow factor. I'll edit this part out. <laughs> Sorry, Nora's home and not feeling well today. So <laughs> I have my four and a half year old or almost five year old daughter with me. But <laughs> um, so if we can, we probably might want to try to edit that little little clip out there. But <laughs> we can do that. Um, Okay, and the last thing uh, that I wanted to touch on is follow up. I think, um, particularly in times of crisis, follow up is one of those things that can go by the wayside. It's like not an immediate concern, but I will tell you that follow up and good follow up continues to be one of the most important best practices that you can follow when it comes to the visit experience. So remind your team, don't let them forget, personalized thank yous. You wouldn't believe how many students that I've heard that that has influenced their decision uh, to enroll at an institution. Can you yeah. Sorry. Um, let me start that again. And the thing that I want to mention is uh, follow up. Um, I think follow up is one of the uh, first things that can go by the wayside in times of crisis, but I think uh, it's one of the important best practices that you can continue to follow and it's even more important um, during kind of situations like this where you're having to continue to make changes and, and adjust and improve experiences. So um, remind your team, personalize, thank you are important that does influence students kind of decision where to enroll it feels like they are known um, so have the have the tour guide have the counselor um, anybody that we meet with just send a quick thank you note whether that's a personalized handwritten note uh, which is always great or if it's just a quick email something is always better than nothing um, don't forget to use a survey um, make sure your survey is not too lengthy or too long and that it, it's kind of hits that sweet spot where there's a, a high submission rate and people are, are eager to offer um, feedback um, that really collects actionable data I think it boosts morale um, when you can forward feedback from students to the tour guides that they mention or um, to you know faculty members or coaches that you have to meet with them during their visit um, the more feedback that they get, the more willing they are to participate in the future and the more excited they are to, to approach that and own that responsibility. Um, and these kind of actionable data, when I'm talking about actionable data, it tells you kind of how you're doing, but it also improves future experiences. So if you're noticing you know, comments or even trends of comments that are around a certain aspect of the experience, um, it could be, you know, people 
people's comfort level with COVID, or it could just be, you know, different areas of campus and things like that. But the feedback um, that you provide, I, I find that the easiest way to make changes is when you have that backing. Some of these things we already know are issues or pain points and visit experiences. But when you have students saying, no, it really is a, a pain point, or this really did concern me or made me feel uncomfortable, or I really love this and this was really great. When you have that backing of student feedback, it makes decision making much easier. So don't forget, follow up um, during times of the pandemic or otherwise, it's always important that you're following up with visitors. Lastly, we just wanted to show everyone our outcomes and how it all went for the for the last year, basically. So um, as you can see, we had a super increase in the number of visitors that we had at, e at each institution, honestly. And I think one of the biggest takeaways from what we've experienced so far is that these virtual events and virtual visits have been great and they've been really engaging in a good way to engage students. But I think what we've kind of taken a turn and um, reshifted our focus to is making them a driver to on-campus events and visits. Um, I think that's one thing that's probably never going to change. <laughs> um, but, you know, when students aren't comfortable with traveling, you do have to meet them when, where they are. So it's just super important to to be nimble and agile and, and do all of these things to help our students. Yeah, and I think like what Dylan's saying, recognizing that in our outreach is important too. So if, if we're, you know, of course, if somebody's visiting you virtually, you're going to invite them to visit on campus and kind of that's the hopeful outcome is that they come on campus and, and they enroll at the college and so on and so forth. But um, what, you know, Nicole mentioned with digital marketing efforts, it might not be a great idea to say, to really push digital marketing about, you know, visit campus, come to campus, come on campus right now. It's not timely and it might actually turn off some students and have a negative effect. But if you have that digital marketing that says, you know, schedule your personalized virtual visit um, and you can engage them with that way. And these numbers here, I mean, they, they speak for themselves that that is students are seeking that. I mean, we, um, you know, when we look back at vendor partnerships, one of the ones that I wanted to mention too, you know, we use uh, Naviance and, and you can actually list admissions events on there and we list as an event our daily virtual visit and that drives our virtual visitors. So students are there, they're, they want that interaction, they're willing to engage virtually. And then, so if you're pushing out those opportunities to engage virtually and then on the tail end using them to increase your visitors, um, it takes so much more, uh, but um, it, it, you know, the results kind of speak for themselves. I think um, when I looked at the, one of the things I wanted to highlight too was the number of events. So we had 460 total events in the last year, um, which like, if, I, I don't know, to me, I was like, that seems like a lot. It is a lot. I mean, that is a lot of manpower and that's, that's not counting kind of the on-demand resources. I counted that as one kind of because it's you set it up and more or less set it and forget it. But 460 live events with, uh, you know, students, that's compared to 278 for us last, the previous year. So it is a lot more. It takes a lot more. Um, and that's why that collaboration uh, that was mentioned is so key. I mean, no one person can do this. It takes a team. It takes a campus. It takes a community of, of peers and colleagues. So um, I, I'm so grateful for the, the resources that, you know, the W and J team has provided me just from a, you know, bouncing ideas back and forth, but there are so many others um, in the field and, and, and both internally and externally that it takes to, to pull this off. So um, yeah, I mean, this is just awesome. So I look at this slide, I'm like, it was, it was so, so worth it. <laughs> And as Martin said, it was so worth it. We always ask ourselves, why is it worth it? And we are always saying to our students why this experience is worth it. So we are just so happy that we've been able to 
share why we think it's worth it and the things that we were able to do to pivot quickly and be agile as we were faced with a very difficult time in our careers. And we certainly wish all of you the best as you continue to think creatively and work towards sharing your stories with your prospective students and making those connections as well, because it is all worth it. And, and for anybody watching that hasn't met us personally, you know that, that we are real people. <laughs> and, you know, these are our email addresses, but, uh, I, you know, I, I'm sure I speak for, for all of us that we're craving to, to get back and have an in-person conference where we can meet and network and get to know you. In the meantime, though, please don't hesitate to contact us. Here are our email addresses, our you know, phone numbers and all that good stuff are readily available online, but we would love to uh, talk further about what we've done, what you're doing, and uh, just, you know, collaborate on how we can continue to provide exceptional experiences for prospective students and their families. But thanks again.